Hey, welcome to your practice test on non-right angle triangle trigonometry. I hope you've done some revision. Not much uh, sense in doing a, uh, a test if you haven't uh, studied for it. So here we go. This is a video test. So what that means is you'll see each question on screen as I uh, take them through. And then uh, you pause the presentation after each question. Have a go. It's roughly uh, one minute per mark. Let's have a look here. 35 minutes. 34 marks. You might change that as we go through and have a look, but uh, about roughly one minute per mark. Pause it after each question, I'll show you. And then at the end, check your work and uh, so pause the presentation, check the work at the end, and then let the video roll and you'll see me go back to the beginning and do each of the questions and you can mark your own work there and see just how we go about marking. All right, here we go. Let's get started. Start your clock now. You want about 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Okay, find theta round to one decimal place. Okay, pause the presentation. Uh, let's just go down and have a look. This is worth two marks. Okay, so uh, put this on a piece of paper. You might, uh, in some of the questions, need to draw the diagram. Okay, have a go. Let's go on now. Question two, pause it. See what you think, that's another two mark question. Go to question three now. Pause this, let's just look at the marks. Down here, it's, it's three marks. So uh, I'll just bring this back up again. Pause it there, three marks, bit, bit more time needed here. Go to question four. It's a shorter question, two marks. Question five. Let's have a look at its marks, a bit low down there. Two marks that one, so we'll just come back up a bit. Two mark question. There are 11 questions all together. Coming down, on the, the question six. Four marks. Question seven. Three marks. Question eight. Three marks also, might just have to move that back up a bit. Three marks. Question nine. Let's have a look at the marks there. That's four marks, so we'll just bring the question back up. Interesting question. Uh, these questions are a screen clip from Hayes and Harris Publications, and the year, year 10 advanced textbook. Okay, let's go down now. Four marks here. I'll just take that back up. Four marks for this question. And now we're on the last question, question 11. Come down. Five marks. Okay. Really big one. All right. There we have it. So uh, I hope you've uh, done well. Pause the presentation and check your work because now I'm going to go and show you the solutions. So come right back up now, right back up to the top, and let's have a look and mark the work and see what you get now. Okay, here we are. Don't forget to put your name on it, mate. Okay, let's go down and do the first question here. Two marks, and what we've got here is find theta round to one decimal place. So you could use the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. If I use the x-coordinate, I know that the cos of theta is the x-coordinate, and that equals 0 0.950, so theta is inverse cos of that, and that's going to give me the answer, usually here, one decimal place, approximately 18.2 degrees. So we put here one decimal place. Okay, and you can do the same thing with the sine of theta is 0 0.312, it'll give you the same angle. Okay, so there's two marks, uh, one for recognising here, or tickle represent a mark, that, that, that's the cos, is the uh, um, uh, x value, and then one for the answer, so it's out of two. Okay, how did you go? Let's go on to question two now. Use your calculator to find the 
coordinates of Q. Now, what you should say here is that coordinates of Q are the cos and the sine of that angle, which is 180 take 49, which is uh, 131 degrees. Okay, 131 degrees. Now, you could do it like that, or you could match it up in the first quadrant with a congruent triangle 49. They're going to have the same y value, and the, negative, the x value is going to be the negative. Okay, so I don't know what you want to do. Do you want to put in uh, the uh, x value of q is the cos of 131, and the y value of q is the sine of 131 and put on the calculator. Technically that's the way you should do it, but of course this is equal to minus the cos of the working angle 49 and this is equal to exactly the sine of that angle 49. So either way, the coordinates end up at um, approximately three significant figures. Q is 0.656 and 0 0.755 to three significant figures. Okay, how did you go? It's two marks, so it's only one for each of those. All right, out of two, hope you're getting some marks now. Come down to question three. Question three, now let's, what have we got here? We've got uh, th three marks there also, so let's have a look at it. Three marks. So. We want to find distance between A and C. So the distance between A and C is that there, up to C. Now, we haven't got an angle in there. To get that, we might use a cosine rule if we had this angle. Can you see how to get that angle? Let's have a look. We've got a UC, so they wouldn't be put in there for nothing. I shouldn't be ticking it because that means marks. So those three angles, uh, the sum of those, is uh, what 155 uh, degrees those but it's in a quadrilateral isn't it funny looking quadrilateral a b c d and the sum of the angles in there is 360 degrees so this reflex angle d so that's what we call it the back angle reflex angle d is 360 minus those there 155 so that reflex angle is 205. Well, we don't really care. We want this one in here, don't we? The obtuse angle, obtuse angle D, or angle ADC, we'd call it, is 360. So it's back to 155. 360 minus 205, because we're in that circle there, there's 360 degrees. So what we now have is a doable problem, because we've got, this is A, C, 6, and in there 155 degrees. See the little tricky do in there? Okay, let's do it now. So using the cosine rule, we can say that this distance, d squared equals 5 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 5 by 6 cos of 155. Okay, and so d is the square root of all of that and you can do it with if you're careful with the syntax on your calculator you can actually do it in one entry if you're not sure do it in uh, in stages okay work out pieces at a time and then the square root okay can't use ticks there because they mean much we'll come back and look at the marks in a minute so d is approximately rounding off 10.7 meters and that's three significant figures. Okay, so up here we should put cosine rule. We should put what we're using there. Okay, and be flexible with the cosine rule. We know what the usual statement is this one, but you have to be uh, flexible and be able to do it in any uh, lettered triangle, not just the ABC one. So that's a generic interpretation you want here that the side squared is the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice their product cause of the angle opposite. So I'd be able to apply that in a different triangle down here. Okay, let's mark it. 
So for getting this angle here, I think we're into three marks here, aren't we? So let's have a look. One for the angle, one for recognising the cosine rule, and one for the correct answer rounded off. Uh, okay, how are you going? Let's go on and have a look at question four. Question four says, if sine theta equals A, then sine of 180 minus theta. Now, what's the connection between theta and 180 minus theta? Let's just go back to the unit circle again. So if we go to the unit circle, we get rid of that, let's make it a unit circle. So here it's one unit, one unit. If we put theta in here, the circular function definition of the sine is the y value. So if we then go theta over here, so this is the angle 180 minus theta, then what could you say about its sign? Are oh, they congruent triangles, these two? So the y's are the same. So the sine of 180 minus theta, same y is, oops, the sine of theta, or a. But the cos of 180 minus theta, it's gone, that's the, the x value, that's gone negative there. So it's the same size as this one, but it's negative, so it would be negative. One mark each for those who don't have to show the working. Okay, one mark for A and one mark for Negby. Okay, let's have a look then at question five. Okay, I'll just look at the mark scheme here. It's two marks, so you've got to do that fairly quickly. So uh, triangle has an area, so maybe underlying information. Uh, find the length of RQ. This is this one here, RQ. Well, let's write down the formula for the area of this triangle. It's a half the product of two sides, get rid of that, half the product of two sides, so 13 by RQ, times the sine of the included angle. Just remembering again, there is a statement here, half BC, sin, oh, well, I think it's usually half AB sine C, in the usual um, ABC triangle. But you've got to remember that you need a generic interpretation because if you're in triangle ABC, then well, this is the area, uh, that's A, that's B, this is little c. So it's half AB sine of the included angle. And that's what you should read here. Half the product of two sides sine of the included angle. Got to stop using ticks there, that's the marks then. Okay, so you've got to apply it here. So there's a side, there's a side, and there's the included angle. So if you uh, work this out, you could say it's RQ times 6.5 times sine of 120. Just multiplying those two together. But we know the answer is, so that implies the answer is 82.2, so because they gave it to us. Okay, so we've got a little equation here we can now solve, just watching this. So now to get our Q, we'll divide by 6.5 times the sine of 120. Right? Our Q, when multiplied by this, gave 82.2. So to get our Q back again, we'll divide by this under here. Okay, oops, I'll go again, don't tick it. Okay, so uh, what do you get there if you do that division? Uh, we get RQ and round it off as approximately 14.6. And although it doesn't say what, to, what level of accuracy, the default for the International Baccalaureate program and also the local SACE program is three significant figures. So you should round it to that and just note the statement there. Okay, so I think, what did we say this was? This is three marks. I think, no, only two marks. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Okay, so there's one mark for this, and look, I think we will make that worth three. We'll change that. One mark for that expression. One mark for putting it equal to 82.2. One mark for the answer. Might be a bit uh, lavish with marks, but you're worth it. Okay, did you get three? Okay, let's have a look. Let's go down to the next question. How are you going? Hope you're getting some there. So question two, um, question six, sorry, find the area of this triangle. Now, you know that the area of a non-right angle triangle is given by the formula I just said a while ago, half AB sine angle C. 
haven't got any labels here. Well, half the product of two sides sine of the included angle. So we need an angle, won't we? So we better find the angle using the cosine rule. So we could find this angle here. Okay, so we would say the cos of theta there equals, do you remember what it is, the rearrangement, 13 squared plus 11 squared, okay, 13 squared plus 11 squared minus the sides opposite squared over twice 13 times 11, and that's by the cosine rule. So putting that in to explain what you're doing. And then if you put uh, these into the calculator, so uh, theta is inverse cos of all of that. So you could write it out again to make the solution complete and have that. And uh, if you do that on the calculator, just remember, have your calculator set up. Casio 9860 plus, you go shift and then the menu button to have set up, which is up the top here. Just make sure you scroll down and the angle has to be in degs, not radians or gradients. It must be in degrees here. Otherwise you get some funny answers. So here therefore, the angle is, um, I think about 104 or something, point, uh, three, seven. don't truncate it here. Uh, 0.374 and you want the sine of that so uh, because you're going to find the area in a minute aren't you so let's have a look we want the area of the triangle so the area is going to be a half 13 by 11 by the sine of the angle you, you just found but use many many places here don't truncate that and then you can uh, do it at the end, truncate at the end, and it's approximately 69.3 metres squared, and that's three significant figures. Okay, all right, so, um, yeah, so just watch this. If you, do, if you want to do it in parts, like you could find the angle theta at this stage, um, uh, and uh, then find the sign later, but there's no need to actually find the uh, theta, you only want the sign of it later on. So let's mark it now, it's supposed to be four marks. So um, one mark for that expression, and one mark for um, getting uh, the uh, correct theta here, and uh, one mark for realising that's the area, and one mark for the answer. Fairly lavish marking there. Okay, how are you going? Are you getting some? Hopefully, let's keep going now and have a look. Question seven. All right, so in question seven, we've got this triangle and we have to draw it. So let's try and draw a triangle ABC and see what it looks like. ABC, AB has got 12 metres, BC is 10 metres, angle BAC, BAC, that's this angle, is 40 degrees find two possible values. Ah, this is the ambiguous case, is it? Uh, for ACB. Oh yes, ACB is the largest angle. So we can't tell, this is not the scale of this drawing, so it could, it could be bigger than 90 because it's opposite the largest side. See that? It's opposite the largest side. So that's going to be the largest angle. And only one angle in a triangle can be bigger than 90, does it? Can't, can't it? because the other two must add up to 90, uh, or, sorry, must uh, sum to uh, uh, 180 plus whatever this angle is. So if it's bigger than 90, the sum of the other two have to be less than 90. Okay, so there's only one bigger than 90, and that's the ambiguous case. I hope you know about that. So we could say here, the sine of, uh, what, angle uh, ACB, angle ACB, uh, that's this one, over 12 equals the sine of 40 over 10. So that's the sine rule, the sine rule there. Okay, uh, and you don't have to put the uh, usual generic um, statement down or any formula for it. 
but you should put it in brackets. So we're going to multiply here by 12. You want the sine, it's been divided by 12. To get it back again, you'll multiply by 12. So um, this comes to, let's round it off now, what does it come to? 50.5 degrees. But what we realise is, as we mentioned in an earlier one, if you have the unit circle, using that to define sine and cosine now, if you have 50.5, the sine is the y coordinate, so that's 50.5, and there's another symmetrical position over here, around there. That angle will have the same y coordinate, won't it, because these triangles are congruent, if this is 50.5. So that angle, therefore, must be 180, take 50.5. So it mates up with 50.5 and produces a congruent triangle with the same y value, so it's the same sign. So what is this, 50.5, if you take that away? 129.5. So here, or we could put, or 180, take 50.5, which is equal to 129.5 degrees. And you could call that 130 degrees to the nearest degree if you wished. Uh, but we'll just leave it as 50.5. Okay, three marks for this. So uh, well, what, what are the marks for? Well, first of all, I think for applying the sign rule there, one mark, for rearranging it uh, and getting the answer, two marks, and for this one is the third mark. If you did get the right answers down the bottom without working, well, we'd probably give you all three, but you should at this stage of your maths career be giving solutions, not just answers. Okay, hope you're getting some marks. Come down to question eight now. And in question eight, you can see we want the direction or the distance from A to C, we want that. And what do we need in that triangle? We'll need an angle, won't we? So we try to find this angle. Oh, this is good. We've got 23 there. So we can say that angle A, B, C in there is uh, 157 sum of angles on a straight line. You don't always have to put that, but we'll put it in as explanation here. Some angles on a straight line. So now, with the cosine rule in this triangle here, we can say AC squared equals the sum of the squares on the other two sides minus twice the product. Remember, I'm using a genetic, a generic approach to um, that formula. And so, if you uh, go and square that, uh, well, I'm not going to square, I'm going to take the square root. But you might like to work all that out first and then take the square root, just so you don't mess up the syntax on the calculator with such a big expression. You need lots of brackets and then uh, the square root of the whole thing. We've got AC squared and with the whole expression, you'd need to have lots of brackets in there and then a bracket around the eight outside for um, the uh, square root, okay, when you take the square root. So it'd be the square root and you'd want to bracket all this in here. Anyway, if you do that, uh, you get, uh, and round it off, take it to the nearest metre, 1285 metres. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the marks of that, the three. Well, I think there's one for finding the angle, 180 take um, 23. So if you've got that angle, that's one mark. If you've got then the whole expression, that's another mark and one for the answer. Okay, so this would be to the nearest metre. Okay, got another three there. Let's go on, we're nearly at the end now. Let's have a look at some of these uh, interesting questions down here. So uh, this, this is an exercise in reading the question up here. Okay, the um, Australian flag is 90 centimetres wide. Find the outer diameter. Ah, here it is up here. Outer diameter is 3 tenths of 90. 3 tenths times 90 is 27 uh, centimetres. Okay. 
Now B, uh, the inner diameter is four ninths. So four ninths of the outer. So it's four ninths of what you just found, which is 12 centimetres. Are you getting it? Okay. Read the given information. That's very, very important. All right. So we've got those two done. This one and this one. Hence, find the area of the star. Divide the star into triangles as shown. Well, that's interesting. We want the area of it. So what triangles have we got here? Let's have a better look at them. Uh, here we have a triangle like this and a symmetrical one on the other side. So can you see, I think there are 14 points on this star. Three, four, five, no, seven, sorry. So, so there's 14 triangles. Seven points on the star uh, equals 14 triangles like, just half of it like that. 14 triangles like that. So they gave us a hint. Find that star by breaking it into those triangles. So um, what can you say? Well, this thing here is half the uh, inside diameter, uh, which would be, now what did we say that was going to be six? This is here half the um, outside diameter, which is going to be, uh, what, what did we say that was? That was 13 point, uh, 27, 13.5. Now, however, we do need the angle. We do need an angle there. So uh, can we uh, uh, find an angle between those two uh, sides? What angle would we have? Uh, well, the angle in here, let's have a look. Uh, in there, there are 14 angles, uh, aren't they, to make 360 degrees? Seven triangles and Therefore, 360 divided by 14 of those angles. Okay, so uh, the idea, I think I've just labeled that incorrectly actually, I think it's like this. This is the 13.5, and this one here is one of those little angles in there. So this is approximately, oh, I don't know, 25.714. Keep, keep the figures until you round off at the end. So the area of the star is going to be 14 times the area of a triangle, which is 14 times the area of a triangle, half product of two sides, and the sine of the included angle. So it's that. A little bit of a tricky dicky problem, this one. Okay, so if you do that all on the calculator, then you get approximately 246 centimetres squared, and that's the three significant figures. So we're just pl plucking out that triangle there, better written that way, I had that on the wrong side there. Okay, that 13.5 is that triangle there. Okay, all right, so let's mark it. Now, what, this is a fair bit of work, but it's only four marks, so that's a bit mean. So there's one for that, one for that, uh, one for realising you wanted 14 uh, triangles, and one for what? Um, this, and then one for the answer. So I make it five now. Okay, so uh, we want five um, marks. Let's have a look down here. So we're going to make that five. So we've increased it by two marks so far, haven't we? Of the overall paper. I think I was a bit mean when I went through initially. Well, see what you got for that. Come down now and have a look at number 10. Okay, so in uh, number 10, it's a bit of a theoretical question. So uh, we've got to have, show that the angles are equal. So angle Q here, what could you say? Cosine rule, cos of angle Q is A squared plus B squared take C squared over 2AB. And over here, cos of angle Q dash, same idea. It's K squared A squared plus K squared B squared. Take K squared C squared over 2 times KA by KB. 
Now if we play with this here, let's factor out the k squared. We get k squared out of a squared plus b squared take c squared, taking out a common factor of k squared. And in the bottom, k by k is k squared times 2ab. Oh, common factor in the top and bottom we can cancel. So this comes to this expression. And what do you notice? That equals cos of angle q, which implies the cosine equal angle q dash equals angle q. Okay, as required, we put down when we've done a proof. Okay, so do you get the idea there? You have to use cosine in this case, you haven't got angles, but the si showing the signs are equal would not do because uh, one could be uh, obtuse. It wouldn't be, of course, but um, uh, here you've got to cover it by using the cosine. Hence show that the area, so let's come down, and what about the area here? The area of triangle P dash Q dash R dash is half the product of two sides sine of the included angle. So it's half the product of what? Um, K A by K B by sine of Q dash, which is uh, uh, put, out the, put out the front K by K is K squared k times a half times a by b by sine of angle q. Since angle q equals q dash from above. Okay, so what do you notice? Oh, k squared times, this is the area of triangle p r q r and therefore we have just shown it, okay, as required. Because PQR is a half the product of um, two sides sine the included angle, and the included angle is equal now. Okay, I've got to stop putting those ticks in. Okay, so come down here, what have we got? Four marks, we want four ticks. So, oh, you had to work hard for this. So uh, I think one for each of these, and then one for this factorising and cancelling. I'm only going to give you one for that. Well, that's a bit mean. But there's four marks there. Okay, see how you go. Let's go to the last question now. Question 11. Okay, so it's a garden plot. Um, we need to f calculate the length of DC. That's not in a triangle, so I'm going to suggest we find all of that and take away six. So, okay, part A, using the sine rule, B, C, all of that over sine of 60, right, we're in this big triangle A, B, C now, is equal to 12 over the sine of 40. So that's the sine rule. Okay, and then for rearranging that, that implies B, C equals 12 over sine of 40 times sine of 60, and that's going to be equal to 16.167, uh, etc. So therefore, DC will be that minus 6, take off the 6, 16.167 minus the 6, that's approximately 10.2 metres to three significant figures. Okay. All right, so let's have a look, calculate the length of BE. Going to run out of room here, didn't leave enough room. So let's have BE now. BE is this side, so what can we do with that? Well, we are told that the area is 13.5, so let's use that. Just remember to check that you use all of this stuff. So the area is 13.5 in that triangle, and that's half BE by BD by sine of 40. Half the product of two sides, sine of the included angle. That's a half of BE by 6 by the sine of 40. And that all comes to 13.5. Okay, so let's solve that equation. Okay, and if we do that, uh, we say, let's say multiply by 2 is 27 equals um, BE 
times 6 sine 40. So if we then divide by 6 sine 40, we should have BE back again, and therefore uh, BE is approximately 7.00 when you round it off. Yes, 7.00, so it's three significant figures. All right, let's have a look at part C, find the area of the quadrilateral. Running out of room here. Now, the area of the quadrilateral, A, C, D, E, that's an irregular shape here. Let's have a look at it. It's this purple area in here. So it's going to be best attacked by taking the whole triangle, area of triangle A, B, C, and subtracting the area of triangle B, E, D. Okay, so can we do those now? So one is a half, what is it? 16.17 um, we'll call it, by 12 by the sine of 80, that's A, B, C. So I've got to find this angle in here, 80, and we're going to use that side and the 12, okay? minus um, the other one, uh, which was, uh, we were given that, I think, weren't we? 13.5, um, BED, yeah, 13.5. So this is approximately 95.47, uh, I think, minus 13.5. So it's approximately 82.0, uh, metre squared, rounding off at the end. So just check that last one, that big triangle, half the product of the big side BC and then uh, AC, which was already known, and just getting this angle by the sum of angles in triangle ABC. So just check that. All right, uh, let's have a look at the marks of that. And uh, what have we got? We've got five marks. So that's a fair bit, so one for this statement and one for getting that, one for um, taking away the six, a bit generous there, um, one over here only for all of that and one down here for subtracting the area, a bit mean there, the five marks. So how did you go? Let's go back up the top now and I think we've added two marks, I think it's out of 36 now. So check out what you've got there and uh, see what you think. Uh, I hope you got a few marks um, and look for, I look forward to you doing well on the proper test. Cheers for now.